second camera, in other words, this guy here, the aspect ratio determines the width. So ideally on a 2D game, you come in here, set your orthographic height, and sometimes people want to set that height based on a particular image in their scene. Um, and there's a bunch of scripts out there you can find. Your sprites, you can specify pixels per unit of 100. You can actually go down to, to one pixel per one unit, and you know exactly how many units are on the screen. So you can make this pixel perfect, map it out exactly towards your orthographic camera. A whole bunch of different ways to spin this. I just want to show you kind of the layout here, that if you're going to do a 2D game, Make sure that your orthographic size fits like that. Now your height will always be set. And your width is aspect ratio dependent. And you might say, well, well what happens if I need to change that? Um, then you, you have some difficulties, because then you have to have artwork that maybe scales differently. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at a brief example of this when we talk about the uh, UI in the next module. Uh, but there's challenges. You have to basically ask yourself, well, it, how am I going to scale? What am I going to clip off? Yeah. Because you can't change aspect ratios without clipping something off or making it skewed in an improper way. So there's no other way around that. Absolutely. And you, you brought up a good point, too, in, in terms of pixel pusher, pixel perfect art. When, for example, you're making a game and you know it's going to be for, let's see, 1920 by 1080 for HDTV, right? Uh, you're going to be playing it on a console, whatever, but it's a 2D game. Right away, that's a great model to know that, okay, my artwork has to fit within 1920 by 1080. Yeah. Use that as your, your canvas within Photoshop to create your artwork, bring it into Unity, make your canvas or your orthographic camera the same size as you would an HD television, and right away you're going to get a perfect example for pixel perfect art. Boom, you got it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like a one-to-one -one ratio, so very, very easy to, uh, to get that kind of uh, effect, essentially. Cool, cool. All right, so make sense? Yeah. Make sense? Great. It, the, the setup is pretty basic. Uh, field of view on perspective versus size for orthographic. And again, make sure you get rid of kind of like those borders. That is going to be your height. Your width is going to be set by your aspect ratio. End of story. Cool. Layers. Layers are important on a camera, uh, both for 2D and for 3D and outside of just the camera. So one use case for layers are to show or hide what the camera can and can't see to filter out something for either performance uh, or I'll show you a little mini map demo in just a little bit. But you can also do things like um, I want to send out a ray and I only want to hit things that are on my enemy layer. Maybe I have like, I don't know, a thousand objects in my scene. I don't care about hitting tanks, I don't care about hitting uh, buildings and maybe animals walking around. I only care about where the enemies are and I want to shoot out and see if I find one. I can put all those enemies on a layer ray cast out and say, only return to me things that are on a particular layer there. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, you can use camera layers to filter out uh, what we're going to see, and I'll show you a demo of that when we look at doing a mini-map. And then you have, uh, actually I just realized there's something incorrect on this slide here, sorting layers. Um, really they should say how to render what order everything is displayed in. Yep. Super easy. So basically, like in a, in a 2D project, the background from the foreground. Yep. If your player character, say he's made up of several pieces and he's moving, you have your arms, your head, your body, your legs, things like that could all be under a player sorting layer. Absolutely. Well, we're going to look at a 3D example. We're going to do something with a little, uh, little mini map here, and then we're going to look at a 2D example. Sound good? Great. All right. So let's take our 3D project here and go to... This one will work fine. When we look in our game window here, imagine that we want a little mini map in here somewhere. And think of a lot of games that you play. You get a little map, you can see characters running around. Uh, it I'm, may yeah. or may not look like the scene that you're looking at. So like, I want to see where all the zombies are in this level. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. Gotcha. Um, or maybe, you know, my view this this level is pretty limited. Maybe I want to see the entire map. Yeah. So okay. I can see exactly what it looks like. To How me. do I get from start to finish? Kind Absolutely. Of yep. All right, so we can do this in a couple different ways here. Let's do a basic way. Essentially, we want one map that's going to show us something like this, but projected into maybe our, I have a coin square there, so maybe we'll just project it into the lower corner down here. Let's go ahead and create another camera. And by default, it's a 3D project, so this is perspective. So we're going to rotate this camera to look down. 
uh, Unity uses the left-handed coordinate system. So, so picture, got my left hand up here, and here's my camera, it's looking out. If I want that camera to rotate down, what axis am I rotating around? My X, right? Actually, like that. So I'm gonna rotate around the X by 90 degrees. So these are degrees here, nine, zero. There we go. It's kind of, now, notice how misleading this is. This is kind of the tricky thing in 3D. It looks kind of like my camera's looking over there, but as I move up, look how that completely looks weird. I'm like, whoa, where, what am I looking at here? So sometimes these views coming from like the right or the side can help. Like now I can see, all right, perfect. Now I see where I am. Maybe like that. Now I can actually go to my top view, zoom back a little bit. Now, now I can see exactly kind of what I want to see. Maybe I want to show something like this in my minimap window. Uh, that, maybe I want to rotate a little bit to fit a little bit more in, something like that. Move it down a little bit more. That kind of looks like a pretty good representation of the level, right? Yep, perfect. So let's save my changes so far. Now this particular camera, notice, it's pretty much just stomped out what the other camera was seeing. If I uncheck it, they were back to our normal view. If I check it again, so we've got kind of a problem here with that. Uh, we're gonna, first of all, take this camera's depth and we're gonna change it. And notice, a camera with a larger depth is drawn on top of a camera with a smaller depth. So I'm gonna change this to one because I always, always, always want my mini map drawn on top of the other camera. Now, viewport rectangle here, we have an X and a Y for position and a width and a height. Notice, see how I can kind of change what this camera's position is here? From, from my viewport. Now, this isn't changing in space. It's changing how it's mapping to my viewport here. So let's change the size of this. Let's kind of make this a little boxy. Would we want to make that camera orthographic also to get? That is one option that you can to flatten okay. everything out as well. Yeah, you can definitely make this camera orthographic as well. So there's a rough little little mini map in the lower right hand corner here. Let's go to zero. Now the thing that I don't like about this right now uh, is I've got my level here, but it's also re-rendering all these lights from above. It's rendering this terrain here. That's extra added. Um, performance it that I don't necessarily need here. So let me save my changes so far. Let's just run this and see what this looks like. All right. Now I can do different nifty things. So I could write a script that as my character turns, rotates this camera. So it kind of seems like it's following my player as it turns. That's one way of doing it. But I just want to address kind of the performance consideration here that this uh, whole terrain here, I don't want it to be shown in this mini map. So I can take my terrain, which is selected here, and I can assign it to a layer. Let's add a layer, and we'll call this terrain or level. Um, since it's named terrain over here, let's keep this terrain here. It doesn't have to match, but just kind of for consistency's sake. Now, one of the reasons that we're going to be tagging this kind of stuff is essentially performance gain. Right, we don't want to render the entire level in a in a tiny camera because we're basically doubling up all the draw calls. We're showing way too much. To exactly, the user. they don't need to see all these little details. So basically, I, I assume you're going to uh, occlude all these different elements and then shows particular. That's it. So and and okay. so performance is a great reason here, but also I might not want to see the whole rest of the train. It kind of might muddy up the view, or maybe I want my own custom view here. Maybe I want to show a new interface inside of here. Maybe I want like um, a white level. Remember we created our, our border before? Yeah. Um, maybe I want that border, uh, I want something like that. Maybe like a white background to show here, but not in the other camera, right? So I can hide it in one case and show it in this case. We could have it transparent too, right? Or the the border? Yeah, the, the secondary camera with the map view like behind it, could that be transparent? I haven't done a transparent, but I would imagine that we would be able to do that. Oh, okay. I'd have to think a little bit about doing that, but I wouldn't imagine why we couldn't. Yeah. Let's take, so the terrain, we added this layer. Um, we call it terrain, but we haven't actually assigned it yet. So I'm just gonna assign it to that layer. Do you wanna change all the children? Because it says there's child game objects here, absolutely. Now, we need to tell that particular camera that we do not want to essentially render the terrain on there. 
So let's go back down to this new camera we created. And I'm going to call this, this camera Mini Map Camera. And in the Mini Map Camera, um, our calling mask here, notice there's everything. I'm going to scratch out terrain. Boom. Terrain disappears there. And now we have just kind of this clean area, which we could actually uh, probably change up a little bit more here, maybe even change the uh, field of view so we kind of maximize that space there. Something like that. So we don't see the rest of it there. We don't have to worry about all that dynamic lighting at the bottom there. So better for performance sake, and it's just kind of a little bit cleaner looking. Uh, now, granted, we probably want to make this a little bit prettier. Maybe, like you said, uh, throw on something cool, make this transparent. Absolutely. Uh, or even with like just a, maybe a lightly shaded background here that we can we can see it a little bit easier. Um, what, what other uh, what other things can you call in the in the calling mask? So anything that we want to any of our own custom layers that we want to specify in here, they gotcha. give you a bunch by default. Uh, but we can throw all of our own Very custom cool. ones in there as well. Cool. Play that. Let's look at this. There we go. Now, another thing you could do is um, you could take all of your characters, and they're really small down here. Like, you can see the little green flickers there. They probably won't even show up on your end. There's a tiny little green flicker on my end here. Uh, we could also call out the zombie and the vampire and just have a script that, that projects him here as a big cube or a yep. big sphere, right? We can make we can do all sorts of cool things in there. And you see that in a lot on mini maps in, in more, you know, you think of like battle type games where, where you see like the enemy circles kind of moving around. You don't actually right. see the character, you see a big red circle, right? Yeah, and it will they have like, like a, a circle sitting far above the character, like above his head basically, yeah. and they, they, they call it out of one camera, but they show it show in another. Know, and in the other camera, they're calling out the character, but showing the, the cube or the graphic or whatever, which lets you do a, a variety of things. You could use the sprite, you know, make a custom sprite uh, kind of iconic uh, icon that you could sit above the character, have that way up there, have it showing in one camera, but not in the other. Absolutely. Cool stuff. Yeah, awesome. All right, let's go on. So that was the regular layers. Let's now look at sorting layers. So Matt was talking about earlier about being able to filter out, uh, show the order of 2D stuff that you want to do. So let's go over to our 2D game here, because that's where the sorting layers apply. Now, the sorting layers are not shown here. Our sorting layers, it's a little bit misleading, because you see all of the layers. If we click on this layer drop down, here's all of the layers that we're kind of just looking at. Um, and then we have separately sorting layers. So this, the sorting layers are specifically used for 2D. If we edit layers, we can add all of our own sorting layers here. And on this one, there's always a default. And there's three rules that happen here for the order that's going to get drawn out. Um, the first is the order of layer. So default is drawn out first. Background will be drawn on top of that. Layer on top of that. Players on top of that. Particles. My new layer would be drawn on top of everything else. So if I took um, in this scene, and I took this tree, and I dragged it up here, right? This guy's behind everything right now. If I set its layer to my new layer, this is now drawn on top of everything else. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is order in layer. So let's duplicate this guy, control D to duplicate. And now maybe I want this guy, he's on the same layer, but he's behind him. Maybe I want this guy in front, but on the same layer. Now I can specify order in layer one, and now he's the one that's on top all the time. So we can, we can customize within a layer. A great use case for this is if we have all of these guys on level. But now our tree is also on level, and maybe we want our tree to always be rendered on top of um, everything here. So use case for sorting layer. And then within each layer, we have our ordering layer. And then lastly is our Z position will be used. So the most important one is sorting layer. And then within each layer, we look at ordering layer. And then after that, it is our Z position. And this works great too, not just for level layouts, but also for characters, right? Let's say you brought a, several pieces in and you're building a character out. You could essentially put all those pieces within a player uh, sorting layer, essentially, and then have each one of them at a, at a different number in that layer. So according to So like if I had a, hierarchy, like yeah. a side view of a 2D character, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I wanted his arm to always be kind of like in front of the body. Absolutely correct. Cool. Now, one of the things that, it might not be very apparent, like why would you ever do something like this? 
behind the scenes, uh, let's see if we can actually get Unity to do this here. Let's take, uh, this is level. Let's put this on our level layer as well, zero. You'll find that sometimes 